the Elgato Stream Deck Mini. Is it worth it? We'll find out right after this. Hello, I am Jack, aka your common dude here for this common dude reviews, and today we're gonna take a look at the Elgato Stream Deck Mini. I am just starting my streaming channel, so I wanted to make sure that I have all the tools I need to make it as easy as possible to just sit down, launch the applications, do scene transitions, and increase the productivity of my live stream through the process. So we're gonna unbox it, we're gonna take a look at the build quality and then jump into the software and get everything set up and see how easy it is to use and then we're gonna come back and give our final thoughts. So let's unbox this thing and see exactly what is inside. It's the most exciting part. Seems to be it. So this is what's in the box right here. It's got a good, good weight to it. Feels nice. All right, trash. It, it feels very nice. It doesn't feel cheap at all. We have one single USB coming out the back. There are no mounts or stands. Uh, the buttons do feel very nice. All right, so here we are at the Elgato website. So if you want to get the application, you go to elgato.com slash gaming slash download and it'll bring you right here and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the stream deck for windows and download the current version is 4.3.0 at the time of this recording so it may be different when you're watching this but what we're going to do is just click download All right, so after downloading, you're gonna get an MSI file if you're on Windows. If you're on Mac, it's it's pretty much the same process. So what you're gonna do, as soon as it's finished downloading, we are going to launch the installer. All right, so once the installer comes up, what we're gonna do is just click through this wizard. We're gonna accept the license agreement. And then you're gonna choose an install path, and then we're gonna click install. Okay, so here we are at the Stream Deck application for Windows. This is the interface, this is what it looks like. Um, you'll notice up in the upper left-hand corner, this is your device. So if you have more than one plugged in, you'll be able to click on this and toggle between the different devices. You also have your profile. I did set up a test profile to demonstrate with. In the middle right here, you have your six panels, which represent the six keys on the Elgato Stream Deck Mini you have your settings icon you have a pane on the right hand side which has functionality that is baked into the application you can do everything from launch applications to multi-actions to dive down into let's say obs studio or Streamlabs, control scenes and it's got all that baked in you just literally go to let's say Streamlabs, and you'll choose scene and then choose which scene you want to start uh, toggling okay and you also have twitch twitter one little recommendation if you're using stream elements obs live like i am you go down to more actions and then you will find stream elements obs live right here and you will install it and it will add in that functionality on the right hand side and we can take a quick look just because, I mean, it's a barely, fairly similar to everything. So you have, you know, mute alerts, you've got media requests, you've got your audio sources that you can mute and unmute. You have your scenes, you can toggle sources, uh, record um, and start streaming. So those are really cool. Also, I did notice something that I do want to play with. They'd have a Philips Hue module that you can add in as well so you can control your lights with the uh, stream deck which is completely useful and in, in my opinion especially like if you want to control your lighting and and you just have a setup using Philips Hue I mean the stream deck can control your environment as well as what's on your PC okay so what we're going to do first is I'm just going to show you a couple basic things to do once you first launch this so let's say the first thing you need to do is launch an application 
So if I want to control OBS Live or OBS Studio or Slobs or whatever, I first need to launch it. So that's where we're gonna start. We're going to go to System and then we're gonna go down to Open and it looks like a little rocket ship. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click this and drag it to your, one of your panels. And then if you look down at the bottom third of the screen, you will see that you have a few different options. So you have your trash, so you can you can uh, scratch it if you want, or you can give it a title, and then you can choose uh, where the application file is to launch. So there's one recommendation. If you have the icon on your desktop, I recommend navigating to that shortcut and using that, else you'll have to dive in a little bit deeper to find the exe files if you're on windows so that's usually in c program files 86 um, on the left hand side this is where you will choose uh, an icon or set a custom icon so if you hit this little drop down you can set from file so let's say you've already downloaded a file which i i do recommend a png file versus a jpg file or another format just because png is scalable and uh, it will generally look better you can either choose that or what i think was really cool although i would like to see this baked into the application versus um, having to navigate via a website which you will see here so create new icon brings you to their key creator tool on their website. Um, like I said, I do wish this was baked in, but it's still pretty robust. W what you can do is you can choose different layers. So you can have a background color and then add an image on top and, and you can play with the layers like that. It's just kind of like Photoshop in that way where you have, or, or any photo editing software where you have different layers that you can toggle in and out and then compose to make it look the way you want. You can have just, let's just go for something like, I don't know, Facebook. If you just click on the icon down here, which they have a ton, and I'm sure there are other packs online that you can get with different icons. If you choose the Facebook icon, it comes up and you'll notice that it comes up in the layers uh, pane on the left hand side. In the middle, you have your preview pane and on your right, you have your inspector, which you can um, manipulate the, the different aspects of the image. So then what you do is uh, you can either add, you can add text on top of it as well. You can add a custom image. Um, you can add a solid background or a gradient and then once you are all done with that, you can save key and it will download that image to your device. And then you will go back to your Stream Deck application. And then you will choose from the drop down, set from file, and then you will navigate to what you just downloaded and um, it should show up fine. I won't go download that because I do encourage you to go play around with this software because you can do a lot. I have been able to, even though it doesn't look that great because it's just six keys, you can choose a wallpaper mode and then you can have it, you see how it splits that image up. And so what you do is um, you can save keys and what happens is it takes each of those squares uh, that represent the buttons on the Stream Deck and it will create its own image file that you just drag into that. So what I did was I got my logo and it, it's, it's only split up, so I only have six. So let's say I'm only looking at like these right here. So then I, I adjusted my image to fit between those, the, the only those six squares and split image again. Boom. And so like this would be essentially what it looked like on my Stream Deck Mini. Of course, if you have the, the regular Stream Deck or the XL, it will look that much better. And then what you do is you save keys. And like I said, it will split that up into individual files and you will add those icons to those individual buttons. And it's not, it's not complicated at all. I do recommend playing around with it. And so what I did was I 
created a button that will switch profiles and then it takes you to that full screen and every image on there takes me back to my default profile. So that's how I uh, accomplished having kind of like a screensaver, if that's what you want to call it, just a wallpaper setting that I can navigate to and navigate from back to my default profile. <laughs> Okay, so that's basically it with the rundown. There is a lot more that you can do with this, and I do recommend spending as much time getting used to the software and manipulating your Stream Deck Mini, but this is where I'm gonna stop. The Elgato Stream Deck Mini is absolutely worth the price point. Although it's not necessary to start streaming, I do believe it is a very useful tool to put in your tool belt. Please like and subscribe and stick around for more content here on the Common Dude Productions YouTube channel and we will see you in the next video.